Welcome back to In Your Neighborhood. I'm your host, Sharla Brown, and on today's show, we've been talking with Sandy Boucher. Sandy is an Indigenous speaker, author, and activist. And uh, we're going to get into a little bit about uh, cross-cultural communications. And you do actual training uh, in this field, so why was it important for you to get into that area? Well, I've been around for a while. <laughs> My career has lasted a few years. And what used to frustrate me, and my heart would just go out, because I would see, as I said, I've met so many amazing non-Indigenous people who their heart's in the right place, the intention's amazing, they want to build bridges, they want to have partnerships with the Indigenous communities or another culture, whatever that culture might be, and they say or do something and totally offend someone. And I don't want to minimize it. What they did in the eyes of the other person is offensive, period. But that was not their intent. Mm -hmm. And 90% of the time, they have no idea what they said or did. All they know is all of a sudden they offended someone and the communication's over and the partnership just got ripped up. Mm -hmm. So they became their own worst enemy. So I wanted to do what I could to minimize that because I knew they were coming from a good place. But your world traveler, if you go to a new culture and you haven't learned anything about that culture, you've increased your chances that you're gonna say or do something that's gonna offend someone. But none of us has the time to, you know, research for six months on every single person they're about to meet. That's just not reasonable. But what I share with people are five simple principles they can use, incorporate into your everyday. It's not about changing who you are. It's not about changing how you do business. Who you are is who you are, and that's awesome. But if you want to speak to someone who speaks German, <laughs> you should learn a little bit of German, right? right? Or understand how they look at the world view. So that's what I help them to understand, just to prepare themselves to make it easier to build the bridge. Right. And this is basically a workshop um, kind of type that it's kind of a day. A, a day. full day seminar, very interactive. And what I love about it, it's self-reflective. There's so much training out there that talks about the other person and how they're different, almost implying that I'm the norm. Well, we're all different, and what's normal to me is entirely different to the next person and the next person. So the seminar we share is self-reflective, and if you look at your environment and determine how you came up with certain values or things you believe, then it's easier to understand how other people reacted to their environment. Yeah, absolutely, for sure. Let's talk a little bit about the difference between cultural awareness training and cross-cultural communications training. Huge difference. So cultural awareness training, again, essential. If you live in Canada, you need to be aware of the history of this country. Mm -hmm. And not to depress yourself, but it wasn't 100 years ago. We're talking about either the elders you're working with today or the parents of the adults you're working with today or the youth that were affected by the schools, by their systems in place today that are still oppressive. So you need to know that history. That's cultural awareness training. And it's essential. That is not what I do. Okay. What I do, the way I look at it is we can always only use the skills we have. That's it. You try the best you can, it's not gonna change unless you add more skills. So cross-cultural communications training gives you more skills. It gives you a way to look at how you're about to present your idea mm -hmm. to make sure that it's interpreted in the way you want it to be interpreted. So it lessens the chance that you're gonna be that your own worst enemy situation. Yeah. So it's very action oriented, of course, entrepreneur, love that. Yes. It's very future based. You can start applying it from the very first day you take the training. And it applies, what I love about it, it's across the board. You can use it for personal relationships, in your career, in your travels. My relationship with my own adult children improved because of that training. Wonderful. So that's pretty powerful stuff. That's awesome. Let's, um, let's just even explain culture. What, what? And that's where the training starts. That's the first misunderstanding, I guess. When we use the word culture, everyone thinks ethnic background, mm -hmm. whatever race you belong to. And that's okay. That's one of the cultures. The reality is every single one of us is multicultural. Your family 
has its own specific culture. Mom and dad behaved in a certain way. Everyone had different roles within that culture. Your office has its own culture. And we all know that the first day on a new job, mm -hmm. you're scared to death because you don't know what the culture is. Right. Even better example, when the boss changes at work. Mm -hmm. Now everything about the culture is up in the air because what's going to stay, what's going to go. What people don't realize when they see someone who's acting in a way that maybe they think is not appropriate, whatever way they're behaving probably was appropriate in whatever culture they came from. Mm -hmm. The example I always use is if you look at two children and one was raised in a violent home, the way they express themselves, the way they act, the way they verbalize things is going to be entirely different than the youngster that was raised in a supportive, open, loving environment. If you put them in the same classroom, it's not because the first child is bad that he's behaving that way. He learned to behave in a way that allowed him to survive in that environment. So we have to realize whatever's happening when youth come to this city and they think it's crazy that I got to walk all the way down to the crosswalk to go across the street when I want to get there. <laughs> so I'm just going to cut through traffic. Mm -hmm. That's a cultural thing. You come from a northern community, there's not traffic lights. You cross where you need to cross. In the same way, if you go into an indigenous community and act the way you would in the middle of a city, that's probably not going to go over well in a community because it's a different culture, same country, yeah. entirely different cultures. That's the training I give. Yeah, for sure. So. And great explanation of that because I think that is what comes to mind is as soon as somebody says culture, you think multicultural. Right. As opposed yeah. to every, every environment can have a, have a different culture for sure. Yeah. Um, so you promote something called the six solutions. Let's chat a little bit about that. Seriously, if I could rent a billboard in every city, which I guess I could, <laughs> but this is, if there was any information I would want to get out into mainstream and have everyone understand, because I'm one person, I'm not, I can make a difference, but if we were all working together, now we're going to cause a wave. So internalized oppression, that's the problem that we're going after. And I mean, if you're a woman in this country, you've been oppressed and maybe to some extent you've internalized it. So there are six steps you can take that rectify that situation. And if you keep using them, things get better and better. So it's an acronym because I had to figure out a way mm -hmm. to remember the six step. Right. So it spells out HAPS. So H double A double P S H for heal. So the first thing you got to do if you're experiencing that internalized depression or you feel like you might be, get together with people who have experienced similar things and talk about it. We know if you keep it inside, it's going to fester. That's where it's doing the damage. Mm -hmm. Bring it out. Start talking about it. You're going to find out you have those shared experiences. So that's the first one, heal. Then the two A's. So the first one is act against the injustice or the oppression and not against each other, mm -hmm. right? If someone's oppressing you, that might be because that's a cultural norm for them. So you have to act against those systems that are oppressing us or not the people involved, but the systems, right? So that's the first A. The second A is one of my favorites. It's be an ally. So if you've managed to dodge the oppression bullet or you've managed to work on your internalization and you've got yourself in a good place, if you see someone that's suffering from it, help them. Become an ally, become a friend, become a mentor. Remind them, as silly as it sounds, remind them, you know what, no, I know you're feeling uneasy right now and you think you might not be able to do this. I believe in you. And we know how powerful it is just to hear those words. Absolutely. So that's the second A. P, have pride in your culture, period. For indigenous people, I always say, have pride in all of the things that you were proud of before someone told you you should be ashamed. Mm -hmm. Right? 
So I'm a jingle dress dancer. I'm proud of that. Everyone knows that. I love my dresses. I love the powwows. Mm -hmm. So that take pride in that. There is nothing wrong with that. No matter what your culture is, share it. I love learning about other cultures. I know you do. Yes, so. for sure. And then the the next P, pride in culture. <laughs> Participate in the discussions. Right. That like I said, keep internalized oppression front and center, talk about it. What, when someone is behaving or they're insecure, is it because of what's been taught to them or reinforced, right? Mm -hmm. And then finally, the S, speak up. Mm -hmm. We've all been at the meetings mm -hmm. where someone there is, is very, you know, whether it's aggressive or assertive to an extreme and they're intimidating people, it's not about calling someone out. It's not about challenging someone. It's changing the direction of the conversation. You know, speaking up, using your voice just so you can adjust it ever so slightly so it lessens the chance that someone's being oppressed. Right. So there it is, the six solutions. And we can all do them every single day. Absolutely. So it's easy. Awesome. Well, we're going to take another quick break and we're going to be right back with Sandy and talk more about cross-cultural communications.